Hi. How are you? Thank you for watching again my video. My very, very raw video. Unscripted. But slowly, slowly, I'm getting to refine myself in preparing for you. At least looking a little bit nicer. <laughs> But I'm still not as articulate. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> a few people asked me how I met my husband. So this is a vlog of love story. I wouldn't mention the year, but it was completely a divine intervention story. Wow. Even I, to this day, lost for words whenever I have to flashback how we met. So uh, it was purely, how to say that, destined to meet him because it was one Monday morning in Jakarta where I never never had to go out at 9 o'clock for a business appointment yes as I was saying it was one Monday morning at 9 o'clock I had an appointment with a business um, associate and um, Somehow, uh, I had to go to this five-star hotel in Jakarta, which is called Intercontinental. At that time, I don't know today, I haven't checked. The same hotel still exists. So, I needed to go, which is so out of character because I never had appointment around that hour of the day for business. Anyway, as I arrived in that hotel, the lobby is on the mezzanine floor or mezzanine floor. The main entrance is on the ground floor. So you had to go on the escalator to get to the mezzanine floor where the lounge is, the reception desk is, the front office, the drugstore, some of the restaurants, the coffee shop, some of the boutiques, you know, the usual five-star hotel layout. So when I reached on top of the escalator, somehow, from far, I had to look at this guy who was dressed so Dapper, in a beautiful light suit. It was in February on the 18th, so I wouldn't tell the year, 18th of February. But I had to go to the left when I arrived in the, on that floor. I had to go to the left. Somehow he was somewhere there queuing up for, I think, money exchange counter. And on the right is the reception desk, something like that, and the lounge. But on the left is the coffee shop and shops and the arcade floor. But somehow I turned left. I was supposed to turn right. I don't know why I turned left. Maybe because I couldn't see the guy that I was supposed to meet for this business uh, meeting. So I turned left. I thought maybe he was somewhere walking in the arcade instead of sitting in the lounge. Excuse me, I'm having my lemon tea. It's 5 o'clock in the afternoon here on Thursday. So I turned left 
busy looking for the guy and I couldn't find. But I did see a guy over there in front of the money exchange counter, very, very dapper. And I thought it was like a Brazilian looking banker. I don't know why I had to associate with a Brazilian looking banker. Well, somehow it evokes a certain flair, a certain class. So as I was walking in this arcade, couldn't find the guy that I was supposed to meet, I turned my back, wanting to go towards to the lounge where the front desk is. And as I turned, oh my God, Oh my God, this guy that I saw queuing on that money exchange counter was right behind me and he said, hello. I was really taken aback. I didn't expect that the same guy that I saw maybe only two minutes ago, he was right behind me saying hello. So I said, oh, hello, but I know that's not the man I was supposed to meet because I have met already the man that I was supposed to meet for meeting that morning. And he introduced me himself by saying, my name is Peter. And the funny thing is I couldn't connect his look with the name Peter because he looked so Latin. He looked so Latin. So I thought, okay, he's, what is he trying to pull here? <laughs> So he right away gave me his name card he said, and his English was broken, I'm afraid to say. He said, my name is Peter and I just arrived last night from the States. Um, I am here for business. Oh, I said, yeah, what is it for? Don't forget that I was actually running my export import company. At that time, I was living in Singapore, but I had a house also in Jakarta and an export-import company. So for me, anything that has business ring to the things they say, it is to my interest to connect. But of course, I never made the first move. One thing about me, I look wild maybe, I look very modern sometimes, but deep Within me, I'm a very old-fashioned girl. I don't chase men. I don't chase men whatsoever. So, <laughs> this guy said, look, I am here for the Indonesian Electric, National Electric Company. And I was thinking, wow, that's good. That's good for my business because I could always supply something so, so, of course, I decided to talk to him. So he said, listen, I'm going to be here for two months because I'm going to do this business. And I was thinking, okay, that's great because maybe he could introduce me to the local people here where I could supply some things for the office because I was dealing in uh, interior uh, supplies. Don't forget at that time, there were no import stuff allowed, but I could always bring something from Singapore since I was living there. And the kind of company or business that I was running, there were not many. I was the second person in Jakarta. So anyways, I said, all right. I said, and he said, uh, look, okay, this is my card. Could you please give me your phone number because it would be nice to to talk about business or something and he well he didn't say like that he didn't say business it was my mind that was thinking business but he was just being a very simple visitor of this country but on business so i gave me i gave him his, my number that was it and we said goodbye. And then I got a glimpse of him. He was being picked up by the local uh, companies, uh, maybe, you know, executive here. And I could see he was smiling so, so happily going down the 
escalator and I was still sitting there waiting for this man that I was supposed to meet for business. Maybe I, I was too early, perhaps. So anyway, the next day, he called my office because the number that I gave was the office number. I had two numbers, if I'm not mistaken. One was for my house and one was for the office. And the office is in my house anyway. And I had a secretary, I had the a staff in that office. So they picked up the phone from him, not me directly, since it was a business number that I gave him. And that was it. He called, but I didn't remember who it was. I couldn't remember who it was because I completely forgot about this man, honest to God. I completely forgot about meeting him. So he was struggling to explain to me with his broken English who he was because I, don't, I didn't remember. So then he said, I am Peter. I am Peter. Do you remember yesterday in the lobby? I saw, I met you from Italy, Italy. <laughs> then I remember, I said, oh yes, okay, okay. But I, I, I wasn't attracted or interested because the way he spoke was too, too broken for my taste. I knew already that I couldn't co connect with this guy. So anyway, he said, I would like to invite you for dinner tonight. And I was thinking, oh, Okay, but since he's new, how, where is he going to take me for dinner? So he said, you can choose in this hotel or perhaps you would like to go to another place for dinner. And for me, to play it safe, I never wanted to go to meet a man going by myself with the taxi. So I asked my driver if he's available that night to take me for dinner to that hotel. So he said yes, so my driver took me to the hotel. And then we met. We met and he said point blank that, look, I live in this hotel. I'm not interested to eat in this hotel. I would like to know other places outside of this hotel, which would suggest me to go somewhere else for a drink, perhaps, and then we go for dinner. So I said, okay, let's go to Hilton International Hotel instead. So he said, all right, let's go there. So we went to the lounge there, to the lounge bar there, and we had a nice, lovely talk. But I felt a bit strange because the first thing he noticed about the ceiling of the bar, since it was designed in Balinese um, traditional, uh, oh, oh my God, what I, forgot, I forgot the word, traditional, um, uh, wood carvings, he started saying something like, oh, this is very easy to get the, to, to, to catch a fire. That, that uh, depressed me a little bit, you know, I was thinking, oh my God, we are just new and we just, uh, you know, meeting for the first time and he was already uh, uh, assessing that the ceiling is going to be easy to catch fire. So I wasn't interested, to tell you frankly, I wasn't interested, I wasn't stimulated, but hey, you know, it's nice to meet somebody because after all, I was the guest relations manager of Hilton Hotel, which means that I love people. My job was always to, ask, to, to, to socialize with people. So it is easy for me to mingle or to mix with people and for me, okay, why not? Let's just, uh, you know, have a nice time that evening. And that was it. So we went for dinner afterwards in the Hilton itself, in their rotisserie. A rotisserie, is it what? Uh, their restaurant, the French restaurant. And that was it. We had a nice talk. But since his English was a bit limited, it was pleasant. It was pleasant. But then he was so into food, and I, 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 that was my first time to date a man who loves food, you know, who made me appreciate food, because normally we would just eat normal, 
and have a nice conversation. But with him, he made me start feeling enjoying when it is a meal time, slowly, slowly, because that was the first night. And that was it. And the second day he called me again. He said he would like to have dinner again. Wow, that was very intense already. But since I also was alone when I said alone, you know, I didn't know what to do in the evening. I had girlfriends and they would come to the house once in a while, but not every night. So I said, all right. So we went again for dinner that night. We went again for dinner for maybe two weeks straight. He took me for dinner back to back. And what I like the most is that he never, never asked me for anything more, but just for dinner date every night <laughs> until one day, you know, my friends uh, uh, were in my house one evening. We were having dinner together at home. And I mentioned to them, I said, you know, I like to ask your opinion. I have this guy, he's a new guy, and he dates me every night. We would go for dinner every night. But you know something? He never asked me anything, anything, even a kiss, nothing. But I enjoyed it because it was purely dating without any motive behind it. So it was so refreshing. It was so old fashioned and I'm very old fashioned inside me. So my girlfriend started, you know, doing guessing game by saying, look, you know what, let's, let's bet. Let's bet. First, one girlfriend said, tell me what he smoked, because at that, at that time, you know, smoking was still a norm. And I said, well, he, he smoked Philip Morris cigarette. And then this girlfriend of mine said, oh, he's a very conservative guy. I could already see from that, from the cigarette he smoked. Really? She said, she said yes, 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 yes. So, so they all asked me, so they didn't, so he never asked you anything, no. So there they were, you know, going on their guessing game. Once I met up, forget it, just forget it. Because you know why? He's gay. He's gay, definitely he's gay. The other one says, forget it. He, he, he's married, he must have kids somewhere. The other one said, he's not interested. He's just with you because he's in Jakarta for two months. You know, he just wants to kill time while being here. Okay, I was just listening to them, but then the next day he called me again. He asked me for a date again until two weeks later, in his old fashioned way, he told me. So continuing on with my story, uh, where were we again? Uh, now it's dark and I moved to the balcony instead of uh, in my office. So, um, yeah, um, so my friends uh, warned me, please be careful because, you know, it's not serious and that he was gay or he may be a married man with kids somewhere, things like that. But then he kept on um, calling me every day, asking me for dinner. So after two weeks, then he was so, so polite while we were sitting in this uh, lounge in another five-star hotel in Jakarta. And then slowly and sweetly and delicately and diplomatically, he, he, he told me, you know, mm, if you don't mind, I would like to embrace you. Because I really like you. But all this time, mind you, he took me home every night with the taxi and every night when we bid goodbye he would kiss me on my forehead and of course it blew my mind that how proper and correct and old-fashioned the man was too old-fashioned actually for me but it was 
enlightening. It was delightful. So when he said that, you know, I was thinking, oh, wow, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> but of course, I didn't say that to him because he didn't know our jokes. You know, he was still very Italian. He didn't know the, the, the what they call the typical English speaking jokes. So that was it after two weeks. And after that, he, after two days, he just called his family in Milan and let them talk to me right away. And he said to me that I would like you to know Italy. I would like to introduce you to Italy. I would like to take you around Italy because I would like you to see my country. And I didn't take him seriously. And he was being very serious. So he said to me, look, now these two months is uh, going to end soon. Because after that, we dated on until the last day of his stint in Jakarta. He said, I'm going back now to Jakarta, but please give me one month because I'm going to come back here personally to pick you up. At that time, we didn't have internet. And he could have easily said, look, I will buy a ticket and then you'll come and join me in Italy. He didn't. He said, I will come and pick you up myself. The only thing that I would ask you is, after one month when I come back, I could only have free time one week. So please be ready in that one week already with everything that you need uh, done, like the passport, the visa, etc. Just have the travel agent take care of it. That's all, because I can only have one week free to come here to pick you up. And that's what he did. That's exactly what he did. He came, stayed here one week, my passport was ready, and he went. And, I, and we went together to Italy, and I thought it was a joke. And he meant every word he said. And I'm telling you, I think I could never find an honest man like that anymore ever. Oh yes, he had his difficult character too, okay? He was a difficult man. He was a complex man. But one thing about him was his honesty his faithfulness and his generosity. And that's what I don't think I can find in another man. That's why it's difficult for me to be with another man maybe today. Because he was honest, he was faithful, he was generous. I was his life. The only thing he was a difficult man also for me to live with. He was a complex man because maybe because of cultural differences because I've never having to live in the men's country before. So also it wasn't like difficult maybe on his side but also difficult on my side. And he did tell me when we were dating because I pre-warned him. I said to him, I'm not an easy woman to be with. Because I was a little bit brushing him off. And he said, that's what I want in a woman. That's what I like in a woman. A difficult woman, he said. And I thought I was discouraging him to continue on with me. But that's what made him even more stimulated by pursuing me. So it was just destiny. It was just destiny that we had to be together. And that was my story. My love story with him and it lasted so long with him. Difficult marriage, but a lot of joy is also a lot. A lot of joy, a lot of happiness, a lot of travelings, a lot of experiences living in different various countries together. But he was an Italian man. He was a very 
masculine man, very strong man. But at the same time, he was soft-hearted. He was very, very tender, the most, the most tender man I've ever had, and I'm blessed to have had. Because some men, they write, you know, about love, or they maybe send you cards about love. But he didn't write, he didn't send me cards. He said those words. And almost every day he said those words. Every day he would tell me I look beautiful. Every day he would look at me like as if he just met me. Sometimes there were the moments when I would tell him, can you please look somewhere else? Because he kept looking at me until the end. And he would answer, he would answer, but you are my wife. I'm in love with you, I love you. I just want to look at you. That is the kind of answers he gave me. He adored me, he, he was a true old fashioned man. So that's my story. And I lost him four years ago. But we had full life together, full, full life together. Even though there were many times I didn't join him in his assignments in other countries because that was also my choice, not his choice. He wanted me to be with him everywhere he went. But there were times when I didn't feel like going, like in that country, where is that, that country, that Gaddafi's country, I forgot what, Lebanon, I didn't join, India, I didn't join, Japan, I didn't join. So, that is my love story. Follow, follow that destiny that's, that's paved already for you, just follow, that's it, okay? So, that's my love story for this vlog. Thank you for watching my video. Hope to see you in the next video. Bye.